Hey, this is the Sony FE 20mm 1.8G lens, and I wanted to do a little mini review on this lens. Now, it's not a brand new lens, it's been out for quite a while, but I've been on the hunt for the perfect vlogging lens, and I think this could be it. Hey there, so welcome to the video. So as mentioned in the intro, this isn't gonna be a super long video. This is just a lens that I've recently bought and we're super, super happy with it. So I just thought it would be a good idea to put up some shots, uh, do some test filming with this lens because we're using this lens really as a film only lens. I don't really do much photography at all. And when I was looking for reviews of this lens, a lot of the reviews um, I found on YouTube were really only for photography. Uh, there are a couple of good video ones out there and I just wanted to add to that, add some more shots, maybe some shots of the UK that you haven't seen. Now, to let you know where I'm at, we do have the Sigma lens attached to the 70A7S III, but it's quite a big beast as you'll see from these photos. It's a great lens, it's nice and crisp and clear, but if you are trying to vlog with it, it does get a bit heavy over time. So I was looking for A, a lens which was small enough to carry around and vlog with with one hand, and also a wide enough angle, because I found with this lens, this is a 24 millimeter, that it's not quite wide enough. You can fit in, but you really have to hold your uh, arm out quite far. With the 20 mil lens from Sony, you can hold your arm out and you can fit everything in shot. And not only that, it's wide enough that you actually get some context of where you're filming. So let's give you a little guide, a little tour around this lens before we show you some shots. Okay, so let's look at this lens. It's actually a plastic build quality, but it is a Sony G lens, so it is very, very high quality. Now on the side here, you've got an autofocus and a manual focus switch, which is really nice and clicky. You've got a custom button here, which at the moment it's set to lock focus. And I like using that because the autofocus on a Sony a7S III is so good that I very rarely nowadays use manual focus. But if I do want to lock onto something, I can just hold this button down and I know the focus is gonna stick. Then if we look towards the bottom of the lens, we have a clickable aperture ring. And I've never actually had a lens with a clickable aperture ring on it, and it's actually quite handy. It just means that without going through your camera settings, you can change the aperture directly from the lens itself. And then on the right-hand side of the lens, you've got click on or off. And it's quite clever. What it does is it essentially takes the sort of haptic clicks that you get when you spin these lenses. So it might be quite handy if you wanna be completely silent. I actually like having it on because I like knowing that I've kind of moved the dials in some way. Now, as you can see against these comparisons here, here's what our Sony a7S III looks like with the Sigma lens attached. And you can see it's not a huge lens, but it is a bit of a big beast if you want to vlog with it. Now, here's what it looks like with the Sony lens attached. And you can see it's a lot, lot smaller. So this makes it great if you wanna vlog on your own, or if you're just doing some travels and you just wanna take one lens that could be really good for almost everything. So with that, Lewis went out with Leah and they got some great shots around Manchester. So I'm just gonna play these shots to you now before I show you the vlogging tests. So enjoy. So as you can see there, those shots look super crisp, really, really nice. And I think the 20 mil wide angle lens just gives you so much more context of where you are when you're going out doing any kind of video work. But now let's take a look at the vlogging setup. 
We're outside now and this is a vlogging test, just handheld using the Sony a7S III and this new Sony lens. At the moment I've got the stabilization turned off because when you put on the active stabilization it does crop in but I just wanted to show you how wide this is. Now we're going to switch to active stabilization on. Okay so active stabilization is now turned on and as you can see it crops in a little bit more but what I like about this is I can hold the camera really close to me so as you can see there probably in this shot here it's literally about one foot away from me and it's a pretty good nice tight shot but I can hold it really far out and then you get context of where you are so you can see the Manchester Library in the background you get to see the whole street and of course if you used a selfie stick you could get this even further away so I just love how wide this shot is but anyway what do you think of the contrast of the sharpness of the lens let me know just doing a bit of a walking test now now unfortunately this lens doesn't have any IOSS in it so you've only got the stabilization built into the Sony a7S III now this is active stabilization turned on and it's okay it's not the best it's not as good as a GH5 or anything like that but it might do the job for you so this is just a test handheld not using any tripod or gimbal just so you can see how steady the lens looks when you have this on the Sony a7S III. Now another reason you may want to buy this lens is for its low light performance. Obviously a lens with the low aperture allows more light to come in. So what we've done is we've got our blackout blinds down, we've got all of the studio lights out and you can see how well this shot looks. Is it very grainy in your opinion? No. Does it, does it look okay? Because we've set the aperture to 1.8, the ISO at 100. It's pretty dark in here, but how does the shot look? Is it nice and crispy? Is there much noise? Now what we're going to do is just going to turn on some of the backlights maybe play around with some of the settings, but just to show you what the low light performance is like inside a studio where we can control the lights. I did try and go out last night and film, but it was absolutely throwing it down with rain. So bear with me. Okay, so the first change there, we've added some background lights behind me. Obviously there's no lights in front of me at the moment. What's it looking like now? Is the picture still nice and sharp? Next up, I'm going to turn on one of the side studio lights. There we go. So we've got one studio light on at the moment. How's the shot looking? Now, of course, this is a bit better lighting. We've now got that front fill light uh, sort of filling my right hand side of my face. How is the shot looking now? And now if I turn on the major studio light, we'll probably be a little bit overexposed here. But there we go, that's what it usually looks like with all of the studio lights on. So you can see a big difference there between no lights on and lights on. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this short video and I hope you enjoyed the video clips there from this Sony lens. We're really, really enjoying it. Um, I just wanna mention the price as well. This isn't a cheap lens. This costs nearly a thousand pounds here in the UK but I really want to invest in what we do here because we're putting videos out every week. As you know, we do a lot of product shots and um, you know, this lens has just been fantastic. You know, it is an investment. Um, it doesn't really go down in value much over time, but let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Would you spend this much money on a lens? Do you think it's worth it? Let me know, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.